Last week, I mentioned that I completely deleted my Patreon account. Um, I'd done this as, as a reaction to several recent bans uh, that Patreon had made. The most recent, in my opinion, most egregious one was Sargon of Akkad. Um, he was not banned for violating Patreon's terms of service. He was ba banned because Patreon follows his brand and decided, after monitoring or being made aware of a racial slur that he made that he probably shouldn't have done, but if you know the context, it's not that horrifying. You know, I wouldn't have done it, but under the context, you can see it makes a certain level of sense. But, and it was on somebody else's show. It wasn't even on his show. He was on somebody else's show. And some SJW types pointed to Patreon at it, and they banned him from Patreon over that. He is not the first one. He was the one for me, however, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. They have banned too many people for totally political reasons. That's the only reason they ban them. And they have admitted now that they will watch your content, even when it isn't on Patreon. They will watch it elsewhere. And if it doesn't conform to their beliefs, they will ban you. This is just stupid SJW stuff. And I cannot associate myself with that platform. And in any case, uh, Patreon never really made me any money to speak of. And then I moved to Subscribestar, which was a Patreon alternative. Unfortunately, PayPal has now stopped Subscribestar from using them. This, at the moment, fundamentally changes how Subscribestar works, such that it is useless to me. Subscribestar now only makes payouts when you have reached $150. Now, I have to tell you, I've made a couple of 300 bucks in donations total over the course of a couple of years. I'm a small creator. I know it. I know that I'm not getting a lot of money for it. I am extraordinarily grateful for those of you, Larry, who are contributing and supporting this show, but I don't get a lot of them. I am not Sargon of Akkad. I am not somebody who's making my living at this. Which, since they only will pay out $150, it could be months before I see any of that money. So Subscribestar, because of what PayPal has done, is now totally useless to me. My only way to get money now is two things. My PayPal tip jar, because they're still allowing that, at least for now, and my Amazon wish list. Now, my PayPal tip jar is listed in my description below. I do not dare put my Amazon wish list up because it could get me a community guidelines strike. However, if you want to support me, you can use that PayPal or you can go to my website, www.wrstone.com. It's scrolling past here from time to time. And I have a contribute page right in the sidebar, and that'll show you how you can do that. Um, it's um, more prominent on the promos, that website, which will show up in the, towards the end of the episode here. And there is, again, a link in my description box. And you can see this also if you go to the site and you click uh, Contribute. You'll be able to see my Amazon wish list, um, which includes a couple of things I would like to have, one of which is in a laptop that I always talk about, that money always goes towards if I get the money. And I also wouldn't mind if you went out there and you bought me a Tillian Durables TH5 hemp hat because I am going to have to replace this Indiana Jones hat at some point. And that hat would be nice to replace it with. It costs about 90 bucks, unfortunately. Um, but it would also help me court Tilly hats as a uh, possible sponsor. So, yeah. Now, why is this all happening? That's what a lot of people on YouTube right now are saying there are a number of people who have pulled the plug on their on their patreon accounts entirely geeks and gamers this evening pulled the plug they shut it down patreon had previously been a gigantic source of revenue for them but they could not go along with this shenanigans either so what i really want to talk about here is the re the previous part was just the self-serving part how does this impact me well you got my PayPal tip jar and my Amazon wish list. That's all. That's all. That's all you can do for me personally. But I want to talk about why this is happening. Now, on Patreon, the answer is quite obvious. From everything that the people have said, you can go and you know, research some of this yourself. But when you look at what the, the people at Patreon are talking about, it's like most platforms. 
It is filled with socialists and communists who, by definition, don't approve of free speech, and so will therefore use any means, any excuse, to silence anyone who disagrees with them, who disagrees with socialist and communist philosophies. And one of the ways you do this, obviously, is through income. Sargon of Akkad had been using this as a primary source of income on which he was actually living. Now, while I doubt that I will be ever able to um, live on Tales from S.Y.L. Ranch, I have to say, growing up to Sargon would certainly be one of my you know, goals, if I ever could, or some other high-profile YouTuber who makes money off of it. That would be a dream of mine. But as a libertarian, I believe in free speech, and I cannot associate myself with individuals or companies that would attempt to silence people by killing their income. Now, I have to say, does Patreon have the right to kick people off for political reasons? Yes they do. They have the right to refuse service to anyone for any reason, just as any other business have. However, I have the right to vote with my feet, which is what I did by deleting my account, and I suggest as loud as I can that anybody else that's got a Patreon, delete it. And others are doing the same. A couple of very high-profile YouTubers, one of whom was number 13 in terms of their top Earners on Patreon killed his account. Geeks and Gamers, which made a lot of money off of Patreon, killed its account. And there's at least one other person who did a live stream this evening who is also about to kill his account. And I would hope that these sounds, because we can only vote with our feet, the only way to deal with this is to not associate with it. And I would certainly hope that the sounds of the thundering feet going off the platform will eventually cause Patreon to go out of business. When you don't have any customers, you will die. And I certainly hope that's what happens here. Now, Subscribe Star is a much thornier problem because they were the ones that were banned from using PayPal. They have not done what PayPal, Patreon has done. Uh, indeed, far from it. They seem perfectly content to let anyone use their service, regardless of what they believe. You know, what made Subscribe to, I was happy about Subscribe to last week, and then as this later this week, when PayPal pulled the plug on them, made it useless to me. So you have to ask yourself, why did PayPal pull the plug? Because I doubt, I, I mean, there's conspiracy theories out there, but I doubt, I seriously doubt that PayPal did this because they have an anti-free speech bias. Their business model makes money from transactions. Banning platforms like Subscribestar is really very contrary to their own financial interests. And they have done some bans to other people from time to time based on ideology, but I don't think that's what was going on here. It's just contrary to the financial interests. And it appears to be for social justice warrior interests, but I think that's actually too simplistic. Uh, subscribe to our base in Russia. I do not know, Larry. Larry, I'm not sure where they're based. I just knew that they were the only, at the time, last week, a viable competitor, and now they are not. I think PayPal banning them has to do simply with avoiding violence. You have to remember... What are social justice warriors really famous for, aside from being complete jerks and a-holes all the time? They will send their militant wing, the Antifa, to your doorstep, where the Antifa will employ rocks, knives, and numbing agents, which they did, by the way, in the, nine, in the uh, 2015 Republican National Convention, which you don't know about because the press never said anything about it. But I know because I was listening to freaking scanners, the police scanners, and I knew that people were getting injected with numbing agents. That's what, they be, that's what the Antifa do. They also show up with Molotov cocktails. They do physical assaults, sometimes sending people to the hospital. Most recently, a couple of Marines who had no freaking clue what was going on, um, they were asked by a bunch of Antifa, are you proud? They thought they were referring to Proud Boys. These Marines didn't even know who Proud Boys were. And they said, are you proud? And they said, well, we're Marines. You know, guys who are in the service usually are proud of that. And they said, are you Proud Boys? And they said, what the hell are you talking about? And they got beat up by Antifa. These guys will send you to the hospital. 
and they will cause pro property destruction. They need tens of thousands of dollars, if not more. This kind of violence, mayhem, and destruction is the threat behind any social justice warrior activity. If you do not respond to their demands, there is every likelihood that your employees will be put at risk of death and your property at risk of complete destruction. That is now the obvious implied threat behind any social justice warrior activity. This is out and out extortion of a political kind. Do what we say or we will kill you. It's just as simple as that. So in the face of this, what does a responsible company do? Do you hire thousands of security guards for all of their properties and all of their employees? Or you just do the easy thing, which is kowtow to the demands. And I don't play, blame PayPal for doing this. In the face of threat of violence and death, they've done the same thing. Now, as a business response, if you are a businessman, the biggest problem is Silicon Valley. I was in IT for 40 years until health concerns forced me to retire. And I can say that I have now been of two minds about things. On the one hand, I am extremely proud to have been part of the generation and actively involved in creating today's internet. On the flip side, I now see that it can be seriously misused, and it is being seriously misused by some of the smartest people who have been involved in making it, and they are all centered in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is filled with nothing but socialists and communists, and they support social justice warriors and their militant wing, the Antifa. If you are starting a business or that needs IT or is based on IT, and, or maybe you're thinking about relocating your business somewhere else, don't do it in Silicon Valley. Don't go there. Come here, for example. Come to the Midwest. Come to the Upper Great Plains. Come to Omaha, Nebraska. Now, I know, I know, I've talked to some of you. I know you think we're hicks and rubes. But I'm telling you, man, Omaha is a metro area of one million people. And I have lived here my entire life after spending 10 years in Chicago. And I can tell you that the difference between the Omaha metro area and the Chicago metro area is that Chicago is a hell of a lot bigger and has a hell of a lot more crime per capita. And we are not generally SJWs. In my 40 years in IT, the overwhelming majority of my colleagues were either conservative, libertarian-leaning conservatives, or outright libertarians. We will not do the same things that they do in Silicon Valley. We do not have that culture. If you're a businessman, leave there. Uproot yourself and come here. Hell, go anywhere but Silicon Valley. Leave it behind to die an ignoble death as people leave it. By the way, um, just so you know, the cost of living here is a fraction of what it is in Silicon Valley. For $250,000, you can get yourself a damn mansion out here. So if you're a businessman with IT needs, leave Silicon Valley right now. They are the problem. Get out. Come to somewhere like Omaha, Nebraska, where you can prosper and do what you want and not have a giant culture of social justice warriors that will support people who will kill you. Now, as a libertarian, a response for individuals, I can really only offer one reasonable response. Simply remember that there are a lot of SJWs out there and their ultimate threat is death. So take precautions for yourself. It is legal. If it is legal, carry a concealed weapon on your person, preferably a gun, because in an SJW Antifa attack, it will save your life and probably the lives of countless others. If you can't carry a gun, carry a good knife. Bowie knife comes to mind. A katana would be nice, but carry a knife and keep your gun as handy as you possibly can and get proficient in both of them or either whichever you're going to carry. Because if you don't know how to use them, 
they aren't going to save your life. The U.S. Second Amendment exists for several reasons, and one of them is to protect yourself from vicious thugs like SJWs and their militant wing, the Antifa. You have to remember this. Get it through your head because it's really important. SJWs use the Antifa to do their dirty work, and the Antifa are deadly. There is no government that is going to do anything about this, ever. Government cannot protect you. Only you can protect yourself. Self-protection is a function that can never be delegated, not in the real world. You must always do it yourself. Self-protection is something that cannot be delegated. You must always protect yourself. Social justice warriors and Antifa are deadly. So take precautions and always hope that you never have to resort to them. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.